Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you've been well. I am in a special place with more land cruisers than I've ever seen in my life. So this place here is the Land Cruiser Heritage Museum and it's in Utah and we're here after hours. Kurt Williams opened the doors for me, flipped on all the lights and I've been here for a bit so he's been kind of talking to me, giving me the tour. I'm gonna let him kind of intro the place and then I don't really know where the video is gonna go from there. I'll probably walk around, show you some things that I think are cool, but it's awesome. If you're ever in Utah, Salt Lake City area specifically, you should come by and check it out. So Kurt is kind of on the board here or something, right? Yeah, I'm on the board of directors, been really fortunate to be involved with the museum for quite a few years now since its early days. And yeah, this is formerly the Land Cruiser Heritage Museum. So to our knowledge, it is the most diverse collection and largest collection of land cruisers anywhere in the world. If anyone knows and can prove that wrong, I'd love to hear about it because I want to go visit <laughs> that place too. Uh, but we have a pretty amazing collection here. It was founded just about 10 years ago now by a local land cruiser enthusiast. As you can tell, he loves him, Greg Miller, uh, amazing gentleman. And he had the vision of putting this all together. And we're at the new location in Salt Lake. We just moved here two weeks ago, so you're one of the first to get to check this place out. Yeah, it's beautiful in here, by the way. The architecture, the whole building in general, and then obviously what it houses. So, honored to be here. Pretty special place. Little over 100 Land Cruisers here, all the way to pre-Land Cruisers uh, in the early 50s, all the way up into a brand new 200 Series Heritage Edition, and about everything in between. We don't have every single vehicle. We're still missing a couple Land Cruisers, some that uh, are on their way and some that are gonna be really hard to find because no one's really ever seen a real one, uh, but we're always hunting. And as What are some that you're missing? Okay, yeah, that's a good question. And if anyone finds these, we gotta hear about them. There's a, a model called an AK-10, and that actually predates the BJT that we have out front. And that, uh, no one knows if an actual copy even exists anymore. It was a prototype and it was likely taken apart and turned into parts for the next prototype and the next prototype. So we don't know if one actually exists. Um, beyond that, not a whole lot of gaps, maybe like an HDJ81, if a really pristine, perfect example popped up, the museum doesn't have an 81. That's not unobtainium, that just needs to be found. And then 30 series, we don't have anything in the 30 series here in the museum yet, but uh, there's some work in that. Maybe additional fire trucks, some of the other models. We've got 40 series up to 70 series, but they certainly make 80, 100, and 200 fire truck uh, service variants as well. So, uh, so there's some room. There's not a lot of room in the museum, but there's some room to grow. So if any of you guys know or have a lead on any of those, drop it down below. I'll put the museum's info down in the video description as well. You could reach out to them direct. Cool. You can learn more about the Land Cruiser Heritage Museum online at Land Cruiser H, as in Heritage, M as in Museum, so LandCruiserHM.com. You can actually do a full tour of all the collection. Not every vehicle's on the website, but like probably 95%, maybe just some of the new additions haven't been on there yet. And they were all photographed, amazing high quality photos and full like, uh, 360 views of each of the vehicles so you can really get a vibe for what's here. And while it's really special to be here in person, it's pretty cool to be able to browse the, uh, the website as well. Sweet, well thanks Kurt. I'm just gonna kinda walk around here and like all of the Land Cruisers here are cool, but I'm gonna probably just kinda pick a few and highlight them and show you a little more details about the ones that I kinda think are interesting. Um, so yeah, come along for the ride. So here is an Arctic truck. Actually the first one I've ever seen in person, but I'm sure you guys have seen pictures of these on the internet. This was actually one on, Kurt was just telling me the whole story about this uh, expedition they went on. So the first, this was back in 2018, they were first to travel Greenland north to south. And that, this truck was on that particular journey. And while it's not a Land Cruiser, he's actually explaining to me the rear axles from a 200 series and the transmission or transfer case. There's, there's a handful of things on this thing from a Land Cruiser. So kind of, kind of belongs, but mostly it's just a super cool vehicle with a cool little history behind it. So this is here. Um, and then some of these other expedition trucks 
Kurt said, not all of these has, have been to all seven continents, but this one specifically has actually been on all seven continents. So that's kind of cool. As a museum, uh, they are exempt from some of the EPA regulations. So they have some vehicles that uh, cannot technically be driven out on the road or anything. So if you're wondering, how do they have that? That's, that's why. So there's a bunch of fire trucks that are just cool. Uh, most of them from Japan and whatnot. And then down here, you may not even know these exist. I didn't till about two years ago, I think. This is not a Hummer. This is actually a, a mega cruiser. You can see how wide they are. One seat there, one seat all the way over there. So very similar to a Hummer. I didn't actually know their backstory until Kurt just explained it to me. But these are basically um, Japan's Hummer, but not copied from the Hummer. But the specs for transporting them and stuff was a shared kind of dimensions. So they're almost the same dimensions as a Hummer, but right hand drive, obviously. So Mega Cruiser's pretty cool. Kurt actually has one of his own and another one. This one over here was apparently previously a fire truck like those, but kind of restored and changed to be just kind of a cool expedition rig. So I'll kind of just walk you through a little bit if you don't have the honor or joy of visiting this place yourself. So these are kind of the, some of the more modern ones here, obviously hundreds and two hundreds, uh, all the way up to kind of the current, current 200 series here. This looks like a heritage edition. I think I would guess it is according to the badge back there. And some various other ones, some Prados over here. And then I'll take you back kind of to the start. So cool little shop here that I'll get into a little later, but a lot of cool Land Cruiser memorabilia as well. So for anyone who is a Land Cruiser nerd, you could probably spend a week in here. Uh, I don't wanna keep Kurt too long, so. I won't get too into detail here, but a lot of cool stuff and kind of some merch as well, which I'll have to go through, see if I want to pick anything up. So this is how you'd come in and this is basically how you'd enter the tour. So we start from the very beginning since before a Land Cruiser was called a Land Cruiser and the vast majority of each of these vehicles kind of has a little plaque that tells more about it, gives a little bit of history. And they're all cool, obviously. And some of them have been restored. Some of them have not been restored. So a lot of them kind of tell a story. And you walk through and you see them and you can read about them. And you can just soak up all of that beauty from something like this to a nice restored unit like this. And the building's just, just super cool. So we're gonna get down, this is actually a cool little seafoam one. Get down to here. Kurt was telling me the story about this one. And this one was in the fires. Happened a few years back in Paradise, California actually. And this will have a vehicle history to it. But Kurt was saying the owner of this, the Paradise Fire, people didn't have much notice. So they were like minutes to evacuate. And so they threw everything in their truck and apparently they wanted to, they had a pond behind their house or something. I don't know if I'm telling this exactly how it was, but wanted to drive it in the pond so that it would kind of save it. You know, you could fix it, pull it out, fix it after the fire went by, but it wouldn't start, so they couldn't get it there. So it's a, a super sad, tragic story, but a very cool vehicle to have in a museum, if I don't say so myself. So then right next to that, you have, you know, some restored ones. And I thought this one, this one looked really cool. Sweet, so 
bunch of 40s, bunch of cool, cool 40s and 43s through here. This one's a 42. So there's kind of a lot of little minor differences between a lot of these different ones. And then we get to some of my favorites, kind of the, the 60, 60 generation here. As a lot of you guys probably know, I have a FJ60 of my own. And they're kind of organized by year and model and stuff. So over here is kind of the, some of the more obscure ones. This is one, the Mini Cruiser actually. I didn't even know this thing existed. I'm not, I like my Land Cruisers, but I'm not too much of a Land Cruiser history buff. This is small, almost like, like Suzuki Samurai size. So all sorts of cool ones. We even have an FJ over here. And then a military one, which was an OJ-50L. Some various motors, super cool glass door. I'll have to come back during the day. Kurt was saying this and some of the skylights let in a lot of cool natural light in here. So uh, daytime tours would probably be the best. Though it does look cool with the lighting as well. We're over here, this is a tow truck. FJ56 actually, and then a bunch of the, the 55s, the pigs. This one has a cool history as well. Was a, was a tour vehicle for a while through Moab. This poster was actually this vehicle, specifically number three. Then we cruise through the 80s, which are obviously also near and dear to my heart. A 97, just like mine. And this one actually was interesting, Kurt was telling me. This is actually a 2007 80 series because down in Venezuela anyway, they made them, I think all the way to 2007. Skipped the 100 series altogether uh, and went straight to the 200 series. So I've really learned more in 15 minutes here than I've known about Land Cruisers for a long time, so kind of eye-opening. And again, you could probably spend many days here just kind of reading the histories of all the vehicles. And then the 70s, which are a ton of what they have here. Um, so 70s are kind of iconic all around the world, except for out here. This is probably my favorite one, just because of the color. It's kind of beautiful sage, foliage green, just kind of an iconic color choice. And they go all the way, all the way through here. These orange ones are pretty cool too. So yeah, vehicle history's on, on a lot of these babies, all through here. And definitely an experience. I've actually, the couple of videos that I've done when I was out vis visiting Salt Lake, I've had multiple people comment and yell at me for not stopping by. So by chance, I'm out here uh, filming some stuff with Toyota on a vehicle that Kurt has been working on that I can't really show now when this video is out, but that'll be revealed a little bit later. It's gonna be actually in the Toyota booth at SEMA. So Kurt built that. I'm doing a little video on it with Toyota. And that is how Kurt and I linked up. And then we started talking Land Cruisers. <laughs> and then later that night, tonight, we ended up here because Kurt said, hey, I heard you like Land Cruisers. You might like this little museum that I have the keys to. You gotta get here. And I got an epic tour, a lot of history, a lot of information. So Kurt, thank you so much for your time, man. It has been a real treat. Kurt came here, probably didn't even know who I was before a handful of hours and said, hey, I'll take time out of my night and meet you here, open the doors, give you a story. So a huge shout out to Kurt. 
Awesome guy. Thanks for trusting me. I told you it'd be worth it. <laughs> you feel that way. It was worth it. So if you have the chance, stop by. Again, I'll put their website and everything down below because uh, they have a lot of cool information there and a ton of work has been put into this collection as well as this new beautiful building. So definitely swing by, check it out. And <laughs> honestly, I'll probably be back because I've had a smile on my face here for the last 30, 45 minutes. It's been a treat. So I teased a vehicle that um, I was thinking about purchasing in a previous video to kind of create a little bit of buzz because you guys know I like my Land Cruisers. I was shopping for a 100 or 200 series. And on that journey, I found a lot of LX570s that were priced more reasonably than an equivalent 200 series. So I actually, surprise, bought an LX570 that I'll tell you more about later. But I figure if there's anyone to kind of answer a question that some of you may be asking, like what, some of you may be like, what's an LX570? It's Lexus's version of the Land Cruiser, who some people will say is kind of basically a Land Cruiser, and others will say, that is no Land Cruiser. You are not part of the club. You are a Lexus. And I figured Kurt is a guy who I would trust giving a good answer to this. So we're gonna put him on the spot right now and he's gonna tell us. And we're right here in front of a 200 series. This is actually a heritage edition. Highly sought after. If you have one, you wanna just donate to anyone, I'll take it. But Kurt, what can you tell me about would you consider an LX570 a Land Cruiser? That's a tough one, and you're right. That is putting people on the spot. And it breaks a lot of hearts either direction. But what I will tell you, we're looking at a URJ200. That's the model name of the current model heritage and the 200 series chassis. And in there is that J. And every Land Cruiser in this museum also has that J in there. Well, the Lexus 570, that's a URJ201. It also has that J in there. So it undoubtedly has the same DNA and stalwart, robust chassis drivetrain of a 200 series and a Land Cruiser. It's just, I think in many markets, it's a little bit more, a little more refined, a little nicer interior, a little better sound system. So I appreciate them for what they are. Also a Lexus owner, love Land Cruisers, but I love our Lexus. And uh, for those that want it to be a Land Cruiser, that's awesome, sounds like it is. And for those that don't think they're Land Cruisers, they're not. Okay, there you go. We'll go both ways. <laughs> I'll cover both grounds. All right. So there you have it, folks. LX570, kind of a Land Cruiser. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it counts because I'm a new 570 owner, and I want it to be one more in my Land Cruiser collection. But the debate goes on. Anyway, beautiful museum. If you have the chance to stop by, definitely do. Kurt, Thanks again for your time. It's been a real pleasure for me. Until next time, guys, take care. All right, I figured it'd be messed up to tease you too hard. So this is my 80 series Land Cruiser. This is the first one I got. Painted it brown. This is the Poop Cruiser. Usually has a GFC tent up top. I'm adding that back to it actually, just got the V2. It's actually in my garage, up on my hoist, just uh, waiting to put it on. So this thing's pretty kitted on 37s and full armor and dual batteries and dual winches and everything, but uh, that's on my channel. Then I got this, this is the 60 series. This is on 33s actually. Relatively, relatively stock, except it has a V8 swap actually, and I'm kind of slowly making the interior a little bit nicer. But yeah, like I said, I've been kind of wanting a 100 or 200 as a kind of a daily just winter cruise around and picked up the 570 here. So this is a Lexus LX 570. I started blacking things out, 
deleting the chrome. A lot of chrome though, so it's a pretty big job. So this is the new addition. And it's pretty much bone stock right now. I'm gonna ditch the 20 inch wheels, I think. Put a little bigger tires on it, but not do much. I won't do a whole lot. Maybe a, a roof rack on top, but yeah. I figured I couldn't tease you guys so hard without showing you. But this is a 2010, pretty high mileage vehicle. Got a pretty good deal on it, but it's in pretty good shape inside. Let me know if you want to see a whole video on this thing. Uh, it's, it's a little beat up. It's got some dents, quite a few little dents and door dings and stuff like that that's kind of hard to see in video but this is it and this morning in Colorado it's the coldest morning of the year so far got frost up on the roof here so that is the back and because I want to be a Land Cruiser so bad I actually deleted the LX570 badge and there's actually a Lexus over here and I left that in black but yeah, that's the new new. It's replacing my Audi that's still in the shop. I figured, like, why am I driving an Audi? I really should be driving a Land Cruiser. So there's the back of the 80, the back of the 60. Cool, well, hope you enjoyed. Uh, I'll probably do a, like a full video on this, talking about the LX570 200 series, all that kind of stuff. But let me know if you want to see videos on anything specific comment down below again thanks kurt it was a great tour great time hanging out hope to do it again soon and sorry for this light and if you ever have the opportunity definitely stop by and check out the the land cruiser heritage museum uh, and maybe eventually i'll have my own i'll have my own land cruiser museum as well hopefully all right guys take care